All right, I'm going to talk today about how I use the iPad to facilitate whole class annotation and close reading in my classroom. There's like multiple different apps that I can use. It depends on how mobile I want to be and if the students have their iPads or if they have an iPad and paper or if they just have paper in front of them. Um, but the first thing I do, I, I'll assume right now that I'll, every student has an iPad. So if all the students have an iPad in the room, and my school actually has shared iPads, the first thing that I do is I actually send them all to Safari. I say, open up Safari and go to the following web address. And I, I've made a bit.ly link. You can see here that mine has capital KSK and then Ozymandias, which is the poem that we'll be looking at. Um, so you can make up whatever the shortened link you want. I tend to do words because it helps them type it in easier than, you know, capital L and 6, 9, and W that Bitly can give you. Um, but that's just a personal choice. Regardless, what they do is they go into Safari and they open up. You can also model, I definitely modeled this with them the first time they do it. So they go to um, Bitly slash KSK. Ozymandias. And what happens is that they get this page right here. Okay? It's asking if they want to download or add to their Dropbox. What you want all of them to do is actually download it, and then it opens up the PDF in the page. So on the back end of Teacher Things, yes, this is a link to a PDF, which I'll talk more about in a minute. But on there, and everybody's iPad in the room, they have a PDF on a page. Now they can't do anything with this PDF because it's in a web page right now. But what they can do is if they tap once, they can open it in an annotation app. Okay, I prefer good notes. Many people like notability. You could do skits, you could do explain it. Ah, don't do explain everything right now. Let's work with just PDF apps. So what they go to, um, part below. So what they do is they then the PDF opens in good notes. So this is where I am in good notes. Um, on the user end right now, they have a whole toolbar up at the top, and uh, up at the top they have a pen tool. What I ask them to do is write their name, so I say, um, show me that you know how to use the pen tool, how you can change the color of the pen tool, but go ahead and write your name up at the top, and then what I want you to do is I want you to highlight your name. So in asking them to do that, two things happen. One, they put their, they put their identification on the actual PDF, so in case you have them emailing it to you later. Um, two, you can also see and go around and help and have them help each other, make sure they can use the two basic functions of the app, which are the pen tool and the highlighter. So when we hit this point right here, they are basically ready to do the close reading lesson that you've set up. Okay, and you might use, you might use particular markers, say, you know, circle words that you have, uh, that you're confused about with the like purple highlighter or underline. You can set up your own annotation um, key, if you will, but at this point they're ready just as if you were up on the document camera and you were going to go through an image, but now they, everybody in the room should be prepared to do that with an iPad. So that is how to, that is the workflow of how to take a PDF and put it up, so you put it up online with Bitly, and then you have the students, so I've done that on my teacher end, and now what they've done is they've brought it from Safari into GoodNotes. Now as a teacher, I can sit here in front of the room with my attached um, with, the, with the attachment here, but if I want to be a little bit more mobile, one app that I might use um, is actually called AirSketch. So what I would do for AirSketch is I would actually start in Dropbox. So if I'm in Dropbox um, and I am in my poetry folder right now, as a teacher I have all of my work, uh, all of my um, documents, all of my PDFs in Dropbox so that I'm able to access it on any of the devices that I'm using. So in Dropbox, what I do is I can tap on the PDF and then I can export, okay? Um, and I can, I want, actually I want to open it in, so it's, no, that's not what I want to do, okay? I'm actually going to, sorry, that's to send out somewhere, but I'm actually going to open this document in, and it will load. It's asking me, I'm going to open it in AirSketch, okay? So I could actually open it in GoodNotes and use this as a personal workaround. Um, if, for example, if students had paper, the poem on paper in front of them, but I wanted to annotate on the iPad, so then I might go to my Dropbox and then go and open the document in GoodNotes. But for this, right now, we're going to open it in AirSketch. So what's going to happen in AirSketch, AirSketch is a way to push a presentation out to anybody who has a mobile device. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pull it up on my computer here in a second. But what this, right now, in the app, it's also emitting a uh, server address. So if I'm on this computer right here, and I go to the server address that's listed, what I now, I've basically made myself a wireless presentation. So, you can see up here at the top, I've typed in the address, it'll, it'll load momentarily. 
I've typed in the address, which is a server address, you have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. But if students have a phone in front of them, or if they have a different tablet, basically if they have any wireless device that can access the internet, they can go to 10.1.17.38 port 8080. If they type that in, it's on, it's on the desk in front of them. What's really powerful about this is if you're using a hybrid model, device and paper, what they're going to start doing is I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to do my lesson with um, I'm going to do my lesson with the annotation, so I'm going to say, you know, here we have Ozymandias by Percy Bysshe Shelley, and there we go. So it will start to real-time update. So now what I can do is I can hand the iPad to a student, and I can say, all right, would you mark, and really, it's basically then into my lesson, I can be more mobile with the presentation iPad. And I can say, okay, let's, or I have, there's a highlighter tool as well, so by the time we get to the middle of a poem, when I'm highlighting, you know, the, what Ozymandias has said, okay, um, and the lag time it depends on your network. It usually is not too bad at all. Um, but what you can do here, I'm going to highlight that in yellow, is now I'm more mobile with using both the iPad and floating around, but also handing the iPad to students, which I couldn't do before when tethered. Okay? So like I said, there's a tiny bit of a lag time here, but now students also can zoom in and do their own work. Previously, like, it depends on where I'm zooming um, in order to focus on the, like if I'm in good notes, I'm zooming here and that's what you see. However, in this app, I can zoom, I can draw, I can do all sorts of things. But what's up here, okay, and I can also make it a little bit bigger. Um, what's up here is, is like the overarching, and what they can do on their device is zoom in. So it actually provides a little bit of flexibility depending on if they're trying to copy things or if you've added a definition. You can type into both of these apps. Uh, but they allow you, this one has flexibility, though it also requires all of you to be on the internet. So sometimes the internet issues can throw you off a little bit. Well, good notes. I mean, it's you static with the um, with the tether, so there's not going to be internet issues there. So, with that said, um, those are two ways that I set up. Um, I'm gonna go back to my beautiful. There we go. So, those are two ways that you can use the iPad um, or use basically Dropbox or Bitly in order to set up like the actual document. Okay, that, um, and then you send it out to the students either by giving them the link so they have the document, like by themselves or where you give them a, a way to access it here so they can see what you're doing, but they don't necessarily, are, they're not, they are not the ones annotating when you're using AirSketch. Um, and what's really nice about that is that you can, they can either, like when they leave your class, either they, in GoodNotes, they've emailed themselves their annotated copy, or if you're in AirSketch, um, what they can do is basically have, I would recommend having this be a hybrid model where they have a paper copy and then they have the, your, their digital, what's happening on the board, what's happening on the desk so that they can walk out of class with a the, with the handwritten copy. So it really depends on what your purpose of the annotation is. Um, it depends on how, what, how you want to get it to the students, and it depends on what you want them walking away with, either a digital file or an actual like, paper copy. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.